Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I was looking at some numbers this morning and as I'm scrolling through, I see a number of price changes and I thought, well, what does that really tell me? I'm seeing price changes are higher than what they've been and those are price reductions. You see very few people that have gone in and increased their prices, so we start with that. So I thought I'd drill down for you today and say, okay, well, where are they? How many are they? And how far down are they going and what's the average by by price range and that'll show you give you a clear picture of what's going on in the, the valley and then I'm going to share some insights that I gather from this and things to look at so I hope you find it interesting and mostly I hope you like pie charts because I spent a lot of time on these this morning <laughs> you have a life um let's start here here we are this shows you the big key lime slice of the pie right here is the price range of 400 to 500,000. That's where the majority of price cuts are happening right now, and that is 23% of our total market is in that price range, followed by 500 and 600,000 at 14%, and then 600, 800,000 at 17%. So you got one, two, three, and then 350 to 400,000 at 13%, and the rest are just kind of trickling down here. Now, when you see that, and we look at the largest one between 400 and 500,000, what we see is that the average price cut in four to five is $8,000. Now that means that there were 482 homes that were included in that data. So somebody cut theirs by 30,000, somebody cut theirs by two. So the average is eight grand, goes up to 10 grand after that. When you get to the 7.5 million, it pops up to 252,000. There are only two homes in that mix. So that's where you're at as far as the price categories where price cuts are occurring now let's look by city here this doesn't really have a standout city um, the largest one I think is Mesa at 25 percent of their active listings have cut their prices on the week of June 23rd I'm not counting the 4th of July so as you look around this wheel here there isn't really a standout city that's reducing their prices more than others even Buckeye, where there's a lot of competition out there with new builds, is sitting at 14.1%. And if you look at Peoria, they're at 20.8. So you got Phoenix at 23%, Queen Creek at 14.7. So you don't have a city that's jumping out that is reducing their prices as a percentage of total listings more than other towns. So now let's talk about what these price cuts, where they're coming from. And here's what I like to look at here. This is now let's before I show you the chart. When do you reduce your price? You've listed your house. Do you reduce it the next week? Probably not. Nobody ever reduces their price first week when you ever call them and you ask the agent and go, um, how, uh, how, how willing are you to accept the lower price or some silly question like that? And I go, well, I just listed it. Uh, we're getting a lot of activity. So nobody cuts their price first week. Typically, three to four weeks later. Man, nobody's looking at my house. Nobody's written me an offer. Let's reduce the price. Let's go down 5K. Let's go down 10. Let's go down 40. Let's make a big deal out of it. So that happens between 30 and 45 days after the house has been listed. So remember that number. We look here, and this is where we're at. Average list price per square foot. Started out the year at $368 a square foot. Today we're at 359 Okay, that's where we are today after the price cuts. When were these homes listed? Right here. That didn't work. I want my red pen. There we go. Right here. That's when they were listed. They were listed too high. They came back down to earth. They're slightly lower than where we were at the beginning of the year, 368 versus 359. But the people that priced here discovered it wasn't working for them. They got with their agent or their agent got with them and said, we're going to have to make a move. So they reduced their price. That's the story of our market right now. Now, is that average price per square foot? Is that going down on closed sales? We're seeing some of that. We're seeing some of that here, monthly average sales price. You can see we had a peak in April, 619, and a dip down to 591 getting into July. Those are June sales. So they closed in July. So we always slow down in June. Uh, the high end of the market 
drops off significantly, so it affects our average price, uh, but nothing alarming there, although a dip is a dip. And then we're looking at our active listings right now have come down a little bit again because of the holiday. So I'm not seeing anything that's jumping right out that says that we've got an alarming trend in price drops. Uh, you can see here in total when I look at the chart, this is everybody. We are higher than where we've been down here. This was when everybody jumped to list their homes as soon as interest rates uh, jumped up. And a lot of this was done by the iBuyers and investors that said, oh, we're in trouble. And so we saw these huge numbers there. We're not seeing that right now. Now, some interesting stuff has come out from CoreLogic regarding mortgage delinquency. So I'm seeing articles, videos, comments that the percentage of mortgage delinquencies has increased significantly. Here we go. Once again, hearing me say that a large percentage of a small number is still a small number, let's look at the actual national data. Mortgage performance remains strong. The U.S. overall mortgage delinquency rate remained near historic low 2.6% in April, according to CoreLogic, down slightly from a year earlier. Outstanding mortgages with an all-time low of 0.9% and the foreclosure rate at 0.3%. Nobody's handing their houses back. Serious delinquency, rate, delinquency rates for the ever-dreaded adjustable rate mortgage are still not alarming. They were 2.6% and 0.6% from March. So that is not jumping up. You can see on the chart, kind of leveling out and going down. This one, affordability which is a problem, which is why most people are sitting on their hands right now. They can't afford it. But it's interesting when you look at the numbers. Debt to income ratio reached 46% for home buyers that used FHA loans, up by 1.5 percentage points before the pandemic. So nationally, while affordability is way out of whack, there must be some rises in income nationally that are helping people catch up because we've only gone down or gone up in the uh, de debt to income ratio by 1.5 points. That surprises me. Investors made up 28% of our uh, all single family home purchases uh, so far this year, maintaining their high market share. Uh, the share of home purchases without a mortgage remained elevated at 37%. How does that happen? Well, somebody sold their house in another state, another part of the city, took the equity, bought something lower priced seeing a lot of that the weekly pending home sales reported in the multiple listing service has been slow to rebound 2024 and you're seeing that here we're still running anywhere from 2200 to 2800 homes every seven days so volume is very very low and inventory is going up ever so slightly and the inventory is not increasing because we have more people putting their homes on the market it's going up because they're not being absorbed as quickly as they used to be. We've been sitting about 17,800 to 18,000 now for about six weeks. Hasn't changed much, folks. I showed you that active listing count that we had here, and uh, it's not showing much going on. You can see here it's been slowly climbing, about one to 200 homes a week, and then, of course, the holiday dip. So there isn't anything out there that's shouting from the rooftop saying, here come all the listings. And then what's interesting now this week is that our interest rates uh, had a fairly good week. If you're looking for rates to come down, 6.82. They were 7.01 at the beginning of the week. It's a national average. Uh, the bond market is reacting to a very favorable CPI report that came out that is telling them that more than likely the central bank will lower rates in September. So they're starting to bake it into the numbers now. And you've been around, you know that when they finally announce they're going to lower rates, rates probably go up that day. They always do. Because the market anticipates it, they bake it in, it happens, it pulls back. So you're going to see some rate reductions between now and September so long as the news doesn't change. But I think this is probably about it. Maybe we get down to 6.75. Um, it depends. That's going to depend on some unemployment numbers as they're watching all of this. And we shall see what happens. That's... From 7.1 to 6.8, that doesn't make anybody get off the fence, say, okay, I'm in. But it doesn't hurt. What it is going to make a difference on, probably, with new builds, they're going to be able to afford to buy down that rate even farther 
and uh, and give you a bargain there. So those are the numbers we're watching. I hope that made sense when I looked at the number of price changes and reductions that we've had in this market. <music>